Well, the, the setup of AZN Incorporated was actually a very simple process. Um, set, setting up the company really doesn't take long at all. Uh, it's something you can do in a, in a matter of days. Um, what was more of a prolonged process for us was the, the market research that, that went into uh, this venture before we set up the company. Um, so I, I've been traveling to the US for, for the best part of two years. Um, researching the market and uh, figuring out where our products would fit in and uh, what type of products that the customers are looking for over here so the market research phase was certainly uh, a much more time-consuming part of, of the business setup than, than the actual uh, setting up of the business itself. The standards which we build to in the US are different uh, to the UK um, and we've been, been very conscious of that and dedicated a lot of engineering time to ensuring that our designs comply with the, the local regulations. What we found is that the best way to, to ensure compliance with the regulations in the US is to, to work with um, people who are already in the industry. So we're working with reputable pressure vessel, pressure vessel manufacturers and uh, component suppliers and uh, for example the, the control panel uh, is supplied by someone who is already a UL listed uh, shop. So by working with the, the, the component suppliers who are already in this market um, it's actually been a, a very simple process um, to ensure that our products are compliant with the route. US regulations. I think in the, when you get down to the details of what's required, the difference between the European regulations and the US regulations, uh, they're, they're not that great, um, but having an understanding and knowing how the testing and certification works is, is where you, you need the local knowledge, so we, we've been working with uh, local suppliers to help us with that. Well, the, the US retrofit market um, for customers moving away from HCFC R22 is really the, the key focus of, of our business over here. Um, the, the EPA, as you say, have been phasing out R22 over the last few years and that's set to continue uh, towards a, a deadline of 2020 when uh, new R22 will, will stop entering the market. So what we see is that there's going to be a, a huge market for the replacement of R22 systems. What we find that the challenge is at the moment is educating the industry and educating end users especially um, to give them the knowledge that will allow them to plan for R22 replacement um, over a time scale which suits their business. And we think that the key thing at the moment is providing the information to these people so that they, they can make those plans and budget for the, the work that will need done to move on from R22. Uh, but we absolutely see that, that there's going to be a, a growing market in the coming years and uh, one which we're, we're excited to be part of. Well, it's, it's an interesting question. I think when you consider ammonia for applications where it hasn't traditionally been used, there is sometimes some resistance from end users um, based on their perception um, that, that over the safety of ammonia as a refrigerant. Now, 
the packages that we build address that by, by minimising the ammonia charge and also incorporating many safety features such as uh, gas detection which is built into the system and the automatic venting of the system um, via the, the condenser fans to ensure that any, any small leaks are, are dispersed in, in a safe manner. So what we, what we see is that again it comes down to the education of the customers. They, they need to realise that the, the packages which are using ammonia these days are very different to um, the traditional ammonia systems that they may think of. Um, and by traditional ammonia systems uh, I would be referring to central machinery rooms um, with, with large distributed systems and uh, a large ammonia charge. Uh, what we're offering is really it's, it's a game-changing ammonia solution um, that, that we very much think will be applicable to a number of, of applications um, and that may, may include uh, retail although perhaps not in a, a direct um, ammonia system but perhaps in a secondary system um, and there are, there are many other applications in this market that we're, we're carving out at the moment. Well, we see that there are a number of drivers which are going to, to, to lead the development of this technology. Um, we've already proven the, the technology um, of our low charge systems uh, because we've been using them for, for a number of decades in Europe. Um, but we do see that there are some improvements that, that can be made and some refinements that can be made to the technology to make it even more attractive to the US market. Now, the, the main um, refinements which we will see in the coming years relate to improvements in, in energy efficiency, and that may be, um, it will partly be due to the compressor technology which is used, and there are some developments um, coming to the market now which will um, lead to much more efficient systems, and it will mean that our air-cooled systems can compete um, even, even better than they are now. Um, the, the related technologies that, that we are looking to incorporate into our products um, really relate to the, the tightness of the system and by that, mean, by that I mean the um, ability for the system to contain the refrigerant, refrigerant over the lifetime of the plant and there are various technologies coming onto the market which will allow us to, to reduce leaks to an absolute minimum. And, and again, that um, relates to, to the message that we can put to the markets that are not currently using ammonia, um, that we have technology that will keep that refrigerant within the system. Okay. I think the, the use of low charge systems um, will, will certainly help in, in improve the the safety record of ammonia um, and as I say with the, the new technologies that are coming to the market these systems will become more and more reliable um, but coupled with this there is the need that as we introduce uh, low charge ammonia to new markets there there is um, a requirement to ensure that the, the people uh, working on these sites are properly trained so I think the, the training of uh, the local staff um, and the, the awareness of, of the people that, that are working on these sites is, is key to, to ensuring that these systems are operated safely um, and that's something that really um, relates to the, the proliferation of any uh, natural refrigerant technology um, and that is that the, the staff are properly trained um, to, to use the systems in a, in a safe way. Well, we do have a we do have a number of projects in the pipeline, um, and actually uh, some of those will be in in Latin America. Um, we we offer air cooled packages, and some people are, are surprised that we would uh, be successful in, in selling an air cooled package into the the more southerly parts of the U.S. and, and then especially 
um, into Latin America, where the traditional view is that uh, air-cooled uh, systems may not be the most efficient option. Um, but this is where we we have the experience in knowing that ammonia, which is the, the refrigerant we use for all of our packages, ammonia is a, a very efficient refrigerant at high condensing temperatures um, due to its high critical temperature. And for that reason, um, the use of air-cooled ammonia in warmer climates really does provide a, an energy efficient solution um, when compared to many HFCs. And, and that's going to be increasingly important for um, applications or locations where um, water um, is an issue, which is, is, is becoming increasingly important, um, the availability of water. And uh, an air-cooled system allows um, end-users to, to reduce their dependence on water um, for the refrigeration system. Mm -hmm.